This is part three of lecture one. In this lecture, we will cover debugging, single and multi-line comments, use of indentation instead of brackets, display output using print, variable naming rules and conventions, assigning multiple values and unpacking a list, defining a function and accessing the global variables. So let's get started. In the previous part, we ran the program and the program generated the output. As the output is instantly generated, we are not able to grasp the flow of execution. Therefore, in this part, we will first run the complete program and see the output in the console window. It is necessary to set a breakpoint in the code before debugging the program. To set a breakpoint, simply click between the line number and the code and a red dot will appear in between. It is my practice to set the breakpoint on two lines. To run the program, we click on the green play button, whereas the green button beside it is used for debugging. Once the breakpoints are set, click on the debugging button and it will ask for a network permission. You should allow it for both local and public area networks. Now as the processor has stopped on line number 2, you can see that line number 1 is ignored. This is because line number 1 contains a comment. The hash symbol is used in Python to write a single line comment. You can also see at the bottom, debug panel is open. The debugger shows the current thread of Python executing our code, whereas the console shows the output generated by the current thread. In debugging, we can control the flow of execution using three buttons. The first is step over, second is step into and the third is step out. Rest of the buttons are not required in this course. Step over is used to execute one line at a time. Step into is used to move execution inside the function. And step out ignores the execution happening inside the function to move execution outside a function. As we execute line number 2, you can see the output is generated in the console tab. Now we move to line number 5. The main difference between Python and other languages is that it does not use brackets. Tab spacing is used to write enclosed statements. As we run line number 5 and 6, 5 is greater than 2 is printed in the console tab. Line number 9 and 10 are my first program. I wrote these lines in GW Basic. Both lines are compatible with GW Basic as well. These two lines generate 10 in the console tab. While I'm explaining the code, you need to observe how I use the step over button to move the processor from one statement to another. Next, processor jumps to line number 16. Line number 12 to 15 are ignored because they were comments. Line number 16 generates hello world in the console tab. Next, processor jumps to line number 24 as line number 19 to 23 contains multi-line comment. Multi-line comment required triple quotations at the beginning and at the end of the comment text. Line number 27 converts number 3 into a string and stores it into a variable x. Line number 28 converts number 3 into an integer and stores it in variable y. Line number 29 converts number 3 into a float and stores it in variable z. The concept shown between line number 27 and 29 is known as typecasting where you can change the type of a value using inbuilt function. Line number 32 stores an integer value in x whereas line number 35 stores a string in y. Line number 34 prints the type of variable x whereas line number 35 prints the type of variable y. Line number 38 and 40 show that there is no difference between using single and double quotes when defining a string value. Line number 43 and 40 show that a small a variable is different 
from a capital A variable. This is because Python variables are case sensitive. Line number 45 to 51 are rules related to naming a variable in Python language. These rules are a variable name must start with a letter or the underscore character. A variable name cannot start with a number. A variable name can only contain alphanumeric characters and underscore. Variable names are case sensitive. Line number 52 till 57 give example of different valid variable names. Line number 60, 62 and 64 present three variable naming conventions. First is the camel case where the first letter of the first word is small followed by first capital letter of each word. Second is Pascal case where the first character of each word is capital and finally snake case has all small characters with underscore in between the words. Line number 70 uses a single equal operator to assign value to three variables. Line number 75 is the same. Line number 81 present a list of fruits. Assigning internal values of a list to different variables is known as unpacking a list. Line number 89 prints python is awesome. Line number 94 prints three variables x, y and z which show python is awesome whereas line number 99 also prints the same but by concatenating x, y and z into one string before printing. Finally, we discuss two concepts, function and a global variable. In Python, we define a function by keyword def followed by the name of the function. Here we write a function myfunc which has a variable name x containing a string fantastic. The function also displays Python is fantastic. To understand the concept of global variable, you need to observe code from lines 104 to 109 collectively. On line 104, computer assigns awesome to variable x. From line 105 to 107, myfunc is defined and on line 108, myfunc is executed. Finally, on line number 109, value of x is printed. When we execute this code, you will see that first code prints python is fantastic followed by python is awesome. This is because inside the function the value of x is fantastic and the function called prints python is fantastic. Whereas before calling the function x was assigned awesome. Hence the next line prints python is awesome. A function cannot access variable values defined outside the function unless we use a global keyword. Use of global keyword is shown from line 111 to 116. When we run the code, you can see that myfunc does not print any value but it uses global x to update the value from awesome to fantastic. This concludes our first lecture. In the end, I will like to give credit to W3Schools website code that I present in this lecture and coming lectures is taken from W3 schools. W3 school website is awesome place to learn new programming languages and it is free.